Welcome back to Plus Sports. Right before the break, we brought to you stories coming from rugby, which the finals will be a talk of the town, and also news concerning Roger Federer in the world of tennis. Now it's time to talk football, and one man is in the news for the wrong reason. Yes, uh, Fiorentina's Frank Ribéry has been banned for three matches and fined 20,000 euros after pushing an assistant referee falling his sides 2-1 defeat by Lazio. A 36-year-old who had been substituted in the 74th minute uh, remonstrated with officials at the final whistle. He was restrained by teammates before being shown a red card. Ribery, uh, who joined the Serie A club in the summer, apologized for his actions, later on taking it to uh, Twitter and explaining why he acted that way and hoping that um, they will get to understand. Now, this is a one player who actually called time uh, to his career, but this time he is actually coming back to play for Fiorentina and his actions are not so Something to emulate, and that's exactly what has happened to Frank Ribery. Any, we we actually witnessed Ribery leave um, a very a very wonderful career in Germany, and this time he's there in Fiorentina, and he's actually starting off on this note. Amazingly, he, he started quite well in terms of his the football side of things. He's played really well. At an age where you, you thought he was finished as a footballer, he showed some really good glimpses in the in the first few weeks for, for, for La Viola. He's done really well. But this this kind of outburst is it's quite embarrassing for a player of his experience and um, for, for his age. And and what is more embarrassing are, are the punishments. It's it's quite embarrassing that a player pushes a um, a referee, an official, which is it's clear violent conduct. Mm -hmm. And you give him a three match ban. And then you give him 20,000 euros, fine. That's not even a fraction of what Ribery earns in a week. That's not even a fraction. So if you really want to make players show a bit of responsibility on the pitch, you, you've got to go in harder with, with, with slamming them with, with, with fines or maybe six matches, maybe five matches. And I don't even think the money is the problem because even if you find a player at 200,000 pounds, he can afford it. He's quite comfortable for a player who had such an illustrious career. It wouldn't be a problem, but I think six matches would have sufficed as far as I'm concerned. Six. And I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised he behaved like that because I watched the game and tempers were, were all over the place. The referee um, made some calls that the, the home team didn't like, but I mean, it's football. Sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Well, it's not clear, by the way, um, who the post uh, actually uh, put up on social media by the man who has not gotten playtime uh, is uh, directed at, but hey, Unai Emery is facing a tough time right there in Arsenal and this is one of the biggest stories trending right about now and the story simply is is that uh, many have said Unai needs to leave. And uh, Xhaka's uh, response to what took place recently also is in the front burner. Now, fans claim uh, the post uh, recently put up by um, Ozil mocking Emery's decision to leave uh, um, Ozil out of the match day squad also pointed out by one Twitter user that the midfielder, which is um, Ozil, has the backing of his teammate. Now, skipper uh, Granit Xhaka and star striker Pierre Emerick Aubameyang were among those who liked the cryptic post. Skipper Granit Xhaka's reaction also has continued to make headlines, solidifying claims that um, uh, the, the club is actually in trouble. Ine, we've seen Arsenal go from grass to actually grace. Unfortunately, the grace I'm talking about here is not picking up a trophy yeah. in recent years under, of course, the tutelage of um, Arsene Wenger. But now they brought in someone whom they thought would actually do the job, Unai Emery. Unfortunately, the team is not performing at all. As a coach, as, as a manager of a team, the one thing you do not want to do is lose the dressing room. And with what we're seeing standing from outside and looking, it looks like Emery has lost the dressing room. It looks like he's not quite getting hold of things in the dressing room. There, there are people who are not quite happy with him, with his methods, with his team selection. Some of the players are not quite comfortable. And, and when you leave a player like Mesut Ozil out, who is incredibly popular in the dressing room. Someone who, a World Cup winner, a, gr a great footballer who divides opinion quite obviously. Mm -hmm. it, it's always gonna be a problem when you do not have a reason for leaving Ozil out of the team. And then I'm looking at the Arsenal team and I'm, I'm seeing Saka starting a game and I'm looking at Joe Willock starting games and Ozil is not even in the match day squad. It, it is quite funny. It, it is shocking in my opinion. And, and Emery, 
he's, he's digging his grave. I really do think so. And I, I, I don't know where he wants to go with this. Now, the Kishaka, you give a player a captain's armband who is very unpopular with the fans, you ask him for trouble. Mm. That's a big one. All right, so um, if you think that um, Arsenal has a lot in store, despite their seemingly uh, problems that's actually uh, starting to surface uh, in front of, uh, you could say, goal also during matches, well, you might still keep your hopes alive. But one team that's actually gotten their hopes alive, despite the fact that they have always continued to win, is the United States. Yes, the women's team. Now, um, Vladko Andonovsky, yeah. That's the name was officially unveiled uh, as the U.S. women's national team's new head coach. The Macedonian-born 43-year-old takes the job following a successful stint in charge of the national women's soccer league team, Rain FC, where he was named the national women's um, soccer league coach of the year in 2019. At an official presentation in New York City, and Donovsky was introduced by U.S. soccer president Carlos Cordero and the United States women's national team general manager Kate uh, McGrath. He'll also be the first man since 2014 to coach the women's team. Five other men have taken up the mantle of the United States women's national team head coach since the team's formation in 1985. And he, we've seen someone who's done it. I mean, she's gone. Ellis is, has left. But hey, we have a new person taking charge. And uh, this is a case of living when the ovation is loud. Absolutely. She's done that absolutely on point. And now we have a new coach. Chances of him actually um, uh, leading. In, uh, properly this time. Big shoes to fill. Very big shoes to fill. Jill Ellis did a sterling job with, with the American national team. And when you win two successive World Cups, you at the level you've done, produce quality players and played football to the highest level possible. When the manager takes over that kind of job, he's got to keep the standard. It's, it's the minimum requirement, keep the standard. You can't go to the next World Cup and not get to the final or not get to the semi-final. This big scrutiny will be on you. The, the spotlight will be on you. And it's a huge one for the Macedonian and for the fact that he's a man more questions will be asked <laughs> more questions will be asked well let's come back home and let you in on this story that nigeria's golden eaglets are aiming to book their place in the round of 16 as the team faces ecuador today at the estadio olympic after a dramatic comeback that saw the team edge hungary 4-2 in their opening fixture of the 2019 fifa under 17 world cup the team will be hoping to emulate the success of the previous golden eaglet side that won the trophy in 1985 1993 2007 in 2013 and 2015. Both sides will be aiming for the maximum point in order to book an early passage to the next round with a game to spare. The game starts at 9 p.m. Nigerian time. Possibilities of them winning this one, Ini? <laughs> it, it does feel like um, it does feel like um, birthright to us now. For the, the only 17th because of the many times we've won it. But I'm not quite very comfortable, confident uh, with these on the 17th side. I saw them in their first game, so much nerves. Players were trying to score from 50 yards. They were shooting so recklessly. And it was a disjointed performance. The good thing is that they won. Maybe that settles the nerves a little bit. But I, I hope they play well against Ecuador because Ecuador played really well in their first game. And it, it would be a difficult one, but I fancy the Ecuadorians, in, in my opinion, I, I think the, they are more coordinated than us. But I'll, I'll be rooting for this uh, for the golden neglect. I'm not quite sure. Not very inspired in terms of confidence going into this one. You get me surprised, Ine. <laughs> if you were not rooting for them, I wonder what you will be doing here today. <laughs> anyway, to let you in on the matches so far, tonight we have so many, so many in the Carabao Cup, but some of the key games to look out for is a match between Liverpool versus Arsenal. Don't forget, it was a wonderful weekend for Liverpool, coming off that um, you know questionable uh, second goal, yes, and then you also have a game between Manchester City versus Southampton in the the Carabao Cup. These games are going down today, so do not miss them. You also have other matches that also take place. Don't forget, Everton will take on Watford. You have Manchester City playing Southampton. You also have um, uh, Crawley Town taking on Colchester. And um, Leicester, by the way, I beg your pardon, takes on Bolton. That's another game to look out for. So all of these and uh, uh, amazing goals definitely is what we're looking out for in here as well. It, it, when it rains, it pours at Arsenal. It looks like it's getting from bad to worse. I mean, it's the worst possible time you want to face Liverpool, who are playing at the peak of their playing powers. I mean, it's been absolutely amazing season so far. 
And, and I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be looking at the cup competitions and taking them seriously. And if they catch Arsenal the way Arsenal were over the weekend, it might be a real hiding. It might be four or five. And I just hope that it, it, it doesn't get embarrassing, really. I, I hope it doesn't get embarrassing, but I fancy Liverpool to win without thinking. We hope it doesn't get any worse. Thank you so much, Ine, for being here. Thank and you. that's it on Plus Sports for today. Do not forget to join us again same time when we come back to bring to you some of the biggest stories in the world of sports. Until we do this again, stay tuned.